Welcome back to Kicking It With Kenya. And today we're going to talk about our predictions on the new movies that are coming out in 2020. You know, there's a lot of announcements being dropped, a lot of things, a lot of remakes are happening, a lot of a lot of opinions on how we feel about each of these films. So we're going to kick it off. I know one of the movies that's talked about right now is obviously Bad Boys that's coming out. We already did an episode on that. Another one that follows, another big movie would be like, what, Wonder Woman, Black Widow? What other movies are coming out in 2020? Yeah, you got Godzilla vs. King Kong. You got um, Eternals. You got, I'd probably say the one that I most look forward to is Wonder Woman 84. I really want to see how they're going to, because I really like Wonder Woman. I Wonder think, Woman was a good movie. It was a good, that was like the best DC movie. I might out of the DCEU, the DC, yeah, 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 yeah. It was. I'm gonna put this, put this out here for the Dark Knight fanboys. Wonder Woman's better than the Dark Knight. Yeah, oh I said my it. it's better gosh. than the whole you just really don't like Dark Knight. But as I was saying, um, yeah, I think Wonder Woman was was very well done. I think Gal Gadot surprised a lot of people, myself included. Definitely surprised. Because I mean, who was up for the role? Who was originally up for the role? Wasn't it like talks of like. Like what, Megan Fox at one point? And no, I know Ronda Rousey Ronda wanted Rousey. the role. But she also wanted um, Mar- Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Like So it was like a lot of people out for that role. And when Gal Gadot... I mean, but you have to remember, I forgot she was in the army. Why did I, find, why did I feel like she couldn't... I don't know why I didn't think she could play that role. Well, because it's more so along the lines of like what you are able to believably pull off on screen. More so than what you're really capable of doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why with certain action heroes, you see, like, they're muscular guys. Or when you see certain women that are supposed to be badass, they have, you know, a certain look, a certain style to them. Whereas if they're too small or too this, then people feel like, oh, they're not believable. Which I don't always necessarily think is true because there's plenty of people that may not really look the part, like... You know what I mean? Arnold Schwarzenegger is a, it, in his prime was, you know, a big, big action guy and a big, big dude. But that doesn't mean that, you know, you take a skinny little MMA fighter that uh, that does Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you fold him into a presser. You know what I'm saying? But on screen, it just looks like badass. So I think with Gal Gadot, a lot of people, you know, they thought she was too skinny for the role. They thought she wasn't really a good actress, good enough to, to, to really do the role. But I think she did a wonderful job. And I, I like everything about it so i really want to see how they're going to top that with wonder woman 84 and where they're going to go with the story and where they're going to go with the character especially now with the way the dceu is as far as like with joker coming out and that being its own thing and batman (laughs) being its own thing and how they're going to really you know move forward with the dceu with wonder woman and aquaman too and how they're really going to i mean not necessarily tie everything together, but how how they're going to move the story forward and what's yeah. what's going to happen going yeah, forward. Yeah, because it feels like they just got their hands in a lot of pots and it's getting messy. Mm-hmm. I feel like, but they do have a clear vision for Wonder Woman, Aquaman. I feel like those are like their cash cows, like right now, like okay. they were like their mm-hmm. best standalone films. So they're trying to like build on the backs of these two, but it's like they have so much going on that I'm not even seeing how it's going to be a a nice process. I feel like something's going to. They just need to preserve Wonder Woman. Like, mm-hmm. if anything, preserve Wonder Woman. Like, I think it's like DC ha- has a good opportunity right now to be like that top franchise because things with Marvel are kind of like up in the air. We're not really, it's not really like, we're like, oh, we know this movie's gonna be good. But Marvel kind of like, eh, because you know, like Black Widow is not getting like a lot of. Like, like, oh, do I really want to go see Black Widow? I'm not seeing a lot of people be like, oh, I can't wait for that Black Widow film. Like, nobody's saying that. And, like, Eternals and all these announcements, like, they're not really, like, getting the Marvel fans really that hype right now. So it's like DC, if done right, they could probably have their time to shine right now. Well, also, the difference is it's a proven commodity. Wonder Woman has a successful solo outing. Black, Black Widow doesn't. Now, Black Widow should have. Been had a solo, but that did years ago, not yeah. now. <laughs> but I mean, even if you're gonna do it, like I said, you can still do it well. Like mm-hmm. that's still another movie that I look forward to seeing because I want to see how they're gonna go about it. Right. And I think in the vein of Captain America: Winter Soldier, it can be a very well grounded, kick ass action movie. I mean, Scarlett Johansson, I feel is great in the role. I feel her fight scenes are, are entertaining and believable. And I feel like with 
the a solo outing. There's so much they can do with this type of character. The only difference is she's dead. Yeah, that's so my thing. You know, it's we have to see if if you're going to get the well, she's dead, so why bother? Or this may be the last time we'll see her on the big screen. We should go out and see it. I think it just comes down to whether it's good or not. Right. You know, you got to see what type of word of mouth you're going to get. The what trailer. type of you know when you see the trailer and and when you see. You know, when you start to hear certain things and, and then you'll decide for yourself whether you want to go see. I'm going to go see it. I'm already, my ticket's already considered bought for Wonder Woman and Blackwood. I'm going to go see it. But I definitely do think that they can make a really kick-ass ground. Because I think The Winter Soldier is one of the best, if not the best, standalone Marvel movie. I think that, you know, just the, the grounded nature of it, of the action. I mean, yeah, Captain America's enhanced, so... You know, when he kicks people, they go flying. But it was just so the stunt work, the action, the, the fight scenes. I think the, it's some of the best fight scenes in the MCU, period. You know, and I think with Black Widow, you can do that. You can kind of get back to that. What, um, you know, when we spoke about Black Panther, one of my one of my only real gripes with Black Panther was, was the CGI. CGI. CGI, I feel, is really... It's really becoming a problem with certain projects, you know what I'm saying? With certain movies that you don't need it for, you know what I mean? Like, like one of my issues with like Terminator Dark Fate, so much CG, it's so much <sighs> CGI. And I look back on it and like, you're one of the best, the two best Terminator movies you barely had in it because you didn't have the capabilities it's of doing it back then. And, and it takes it to a certain nature of it being grounded in reality, which is what it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Because when you go so over the top and extravagant with the CG, unless it fits, like if it's Superman or if it's Captain Iron Marvel. Man, I, Captain Marvel, that's different because they're, they're characters powered. you kind of can't do without that. You know what I mean? Like you, you to, to do it their best, it fits them. But for something like Black Panther, he was more grounded in Civil War. And the yeah. fight scenes were a guy in a stunt doing the fights, whereas in Black Panther, the movie, it was so much CG with the I just feel like they didn't need it. That's what Michael, I mean. Michael, Michael, Michael Jordan could do action. He mm -hmm. do fights. So can Chad with Bozeman. Mm -hmm. They, I don't understand why they even bothered doing that much CGI. But the fight scene could have stood a little bit. As far as what I'm, what I know, like, like, um, just off of what I, I think, I think I that it was, it actually was two stunt. It actually was like the real the fight scene at the end. It was two guys in a suit, but they use CG around it and enhance certain things. And then it makes it look like toys. It looks like a video game. Yeah, it looks bad. Mm -hmm. Like they might as well just let it have. They could have redid it in a believable way. But again, and the timing they had, because I, I know they heard they had. I heard they had some issues with timing and certain issues with that as it relates to the production. Because not all CG is bad. One of the things about Infinity War and Endgame, I think Thanos is a CGI character. The CGI on him was was amazing. It looked like he was a real person. Yeah, oh. but it's it's just so much in Hollywood with so much. Even with Wonder Woman, that probably would be my only gripe. The CGI stand-ins for her is very noticeable when she's fighting and she... Because the way that CGI, you know, when you do a CGI character, it doesn't really account for gravity and weight distribution and all of this. So it looks fake. You know what I mean? And it takes me out for a split second because it's like you're mixing the real with CG and it's just like, ah, it's just so noticeable. So, you know, I really like when, you, when, when we get like uh, a more grounded fight scene and we see like the characters, the actors that are supposed to be doing this... Actually, that's what people. I think that's what people love about like the John yeah. Wick franchise because you you see the actor actually doing. I love John Wick. This. Like, you actually see him out of breath. Like you see the real in mm -hmm. it, and yeah. that that adds you into the movie because you start to feel the sense of danger for the character because it's really the character that you're watching. So I feel like um, with certain movies that we're gonna see coming forward, I feel like we're getting into a place where we're getting more and more and more CG and less and less. Of the actual Grounded stunts in and the actual actors doing this, yeah, I see. And I feel that's a problem. And, and I can see that, and like, because I remember I read an article like saying like future movies as soon like are we going to end up replacing real with like fake things like CGI, like the artistry in making a movie, actually seeing the moves and seeing like the like the work the stuntmen do, and actually seeing like the the vulnerability of the character, and actually having that moment of feeling of, like they're in danger. But it's like with this level of CGI, it's kind of like taking that taking that realism out. So I know a lot of people are having issues with that moving forward in movies. Mm -hmm. Like how much is too much CGI or like... Because, you know, a lot of that was also like trying to protect the stuntmen. 
like, you know, using more CGI to kind of protect some people somewhere, somewhere. but it's like what you said, it kind of takes people out of it. Mm-hmm. So it's like not knowing what what it's going to look like in the next 20 or like 10 or so years or what movies the action movies are even going to look like. It's going to look like a bunch of video games or it's going to actually like go back to the realism of things and people being in like those um, hard scenarios and those action back scenes and feeling real. But you said something earlier about um, the Black Widow when you was like uh, the fact that she's the fact that she's dead, right? Mm. That's how I feel. Like I have an automatic bias to prequels. I don't like them. Like that's why I have an issue with Kingsman. I don't want to see another prequel. Like because I already know where we are. Like I feel like this. I don't know because I know sometimes there are some prequels that are good. I feel like it's certain. It's about certain timing. Mm. Like if I fell in love with a certain character already. Going backwards with that character not being there, for me, I'm like, why am I seeing this? I feel like it depends. I like prequels depending on if it's going to answer questions I have. Right. Certain movies and certain characters, like another movie coming out next year that I look forward to, Halloween Kills, Halloween 2, or Halloween 3 in the continuity. <laughs> but the, the one of the issues that I had with, say, Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween is it went back into the backstory of Michael Myers. I feel like with certain characters, I don't want to see the backstory for them because I feel like it's, I didn't ask that. Right. You gave me just enough information to to really get invested. But then when you go back and delve into the psyche of this character, they become a victim. They become, you know, well, this is why I don't want to see that. And that was the issue with Joker, too, a little bit. Yeah. (laughs) But you see, with Joker, Joker's always been a character that even when you do see him do certain things, he's one of those villains where you can say, well, he has a point. You know what I'm saying? With certain things, it's just the way he goes about doing certain things makes him the villain. But with Michael Myers, he's Michael Myers. It's like Jason, Freddy, like... They did the same thing with Freddy. You know the way we, you know where they went back and showed us certain things. It's like Freddy's a child murderer. That's all you need to know about him. You know what I mean? We don't need to know certain things that'll make you feel bad for Freddy. That's that's counterproductive of what the character's supposed to be. He's a bad guy. <laughs> We're supposed to some characters are just bad. bad. So that's what they're doing with Halloween. Well, with Halloween Kills, um, I'm looking forward to that. But with Halloween Kills, with one of the remakes, what they did with Rob Zombie's remake was they went back into. The, the psyche of him when he was a child. Mm-hmm. And I, that's one of the reasons I didn't like the movie. Because I didn't need to see that for 40 minutes. I didn't need to see all of that. You know what I mean? With with the last Halloween we got, I I, I, I thought it was a good you know return to form for what people liked about Halloween. I have certain issues with it. But for Halloween Kills, I'm really looking forward to seeing where they're going to go with Jamie Lee's character, <laughs> where they're going to go with the story, and how they're going to advance it to the point where... She's going to keep doing these movies, huh? That's what I was going to say. How are you going to advance it to the point where it doesn't really become redundant? Like, because how many times we've, seen, she we've seen Jamie Lee take on Myers dating back to Halloween H2O, dating back to Halloween Resurrection, Halloween no, 1. No, more Jamie you know? Lee. More so Jamie now, Lee. now that she's the grandmother, I think she should. I think she should die. I think she should be killed off, and the story should be centered around her granddaughter Allison, personally. But and that's, how old is Michael at this point? Well, Michael was he sixty something still in, in, in the storyline. And again, you know, not to really go too much into it, but that was another problem that I had with the 2018 Halloween because what they did was they made they humanized him. They made him. They 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 met. They they took the story continuity away from. What it once was when Michael was kind of um, like immortal, you know what I mean? To the point where, no, he's just a regular human. So if he's just a regular human, he shouldn't survive the shit he survives. That That's what I don't like about it. No. This is what I'm talking about. When, when you have movies that go back in time and they change certain things that affect how the character actually should be, that I feel like is a problem that certain prequels do because you're going back in time. Captain Marvel, you know, Captain Marvel set pre-Avengers. But there's certain things that happen in Captain Marvel. It's like that doesn't make sense mm-hmm. within the continuity of what we've seen. This is why I have a problem you know? with prequels. Mm-hmm. I just don't like prequels. I don't feel like they are done right. And I don't feel like they're needed after a certain point. Mm-hmm. Like what you said, you give me just enough information. to. Lo- I already love the character. I don't really need this. Now it's like you just, like just for, like if you were going to do, like my thing with Kingsman, I love both. One and two. And mm-hmm. two is amazing. I like both. And then you got Kingsman coming out and out. But it's like. There's a prequel for that. I don't really need to see how the guy came to do. Like I already know he's badass. Like let's just further. If you want to make another one, just make another one. And but I guess like sometimes I feel like people do the prequel route when they realize they can't top 
or they don't know how they're going to advance it. So let me go back and date it back. So at least like, I guess the audience isn't expecting too much of this movie set in 1960. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. maybe the audience is not expecting so much if I like do a timeline that that's limited in like maybe tech or whatever. I feel like it's like an easy cop out sometimes when it comes down to prequels to me. Well, also, also with a prequel, I feel like one thing that Hollywood likes to do is they'll go back in time to change or add something that benefits them for the future. Like we were watching Fast and the Furious. And what Fast and the Furious does is retcon Tokyo Drift in the sixth installment or fifth installment by adding the fact that it was Jason Statham that killed, killed Han. Han. <laughs> but that was something that benefited them for the future to because you further. added the character to a point where I feel like, okay, no, that's not how that happened. I love how they just did that though. Like, the, like they just knew the audience would accept it. But, but that's what I'm talking that. about. Because <laughs> it adds to what we're going to see. Yeah. So though it was kind of like, mm, that's, that's mm, no. But it's cool. It's a cool moment because now it's like, oh, okay. I, that was a cool little time. Y'all tried. But now it adds to the future. We and, not and we're excited. Talk about but we're excited for what we're going to <laughs> see. Because now that you change that, it helps. It, it, it benefits you in the long run because now you get to see a, a showdown. A cool showdown you want to see. So, yeah, another movie that's also coming out in 2020 that, honestly, I, I mean, there's been rumors about it forever, right? There was, like, remember when it was memes about Kevin Hart playing it and starring in it mm -hmm. and da 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 and all these things. But now it's like we're actually getting a Coming to America 2. Like, do you really think... Because Coming to America 1 is such a classic. It's a black classic. People quote it all the time. Like, what is this, Velvet? I mean, Mama Name Clay, I'm going to play. Like, you can quote that movie forever, but it's like... Do you think it's kind of like leaning on like the bad boys ish type of thing? Do you think it's going to still be as funny as the first one, or do you think it's going to be better? Full disclosure, I've never seen Coming to America. What? I've never seen it. I gotta take you like your card now, man. I've oh seen it. God. I've seen it in bits and pieces. You never but seen I've Coming never to watched America. Coming to America. I seen a movie you haven't seen. Yes, I've never. I I seen a movie you haven't Full seen. Full disclosure, I'm just being honest. I <laughs> yeah, I've not seen Coming to America. I'm see. I'm just shocked that I seen a movie you haven't seen. You've yes. seen every movie. You watch movies on you. How you never thought, huh? Let me watch Listen, Coming to America. I watched it in bits and pieces. No. But I had never watched the full thing. Oh my God. Sexual <laughs> chocolate. You had never seen I, the movie. Yes, so I when we're quoting movies, you don't know what we're time. talking about? I know certain parts, certain bits and pieces. Even like the cameos, Cuba Gooding Jr. was getting his hair cut in that movie and he mm -hmm. didn't have a line. Yeah, like certain barbershop scenes, you know, some oh things. I've goodness. seen certain scenes, but I've never seen the full movie, like from start to finish. Wait, wait, I don't like to talk from behind the camera, but what <laughs> happens when you watch the movie? How do you just stop? How you like, how do you just stop? Because it was on TV, I was watching it, I fell asleep, it was late. It was, you know, those type of things that happen. So I said, one day I'm going to watch this whole thing. Yes, yeah, so one one day I'm gonna watch the whole. I'm gonna watch the whole thing before part two comes out. Haruf, you never see. So what are we even talking about here? Listen, listen, listen. What are we even I'm, talking I'm, about I'm, here? I'm getting, like, I'm getting attacked here what are we for my honesty. About? See, if I would have just but, not said anything and I just sat here, but I'm being honest with but the you audience. Know what? Eventually, that would have came else. out if you don't know what I'm quote. Like your response, if your reaction isn't met with certain things I'm saying. Then it would have came out. So excuse watch. the hell out of my honesty. I'm being How? honest about my my situation here. But we talk I'm going about Eddie all the time. Listen, listen, listen. I don't want to see how and this movie one of the few over. movies I didn't see. I'm going to what watch it before. Now? I'm going to not watch curious. it before it comes out. I've never seen any of the Rambo movies. I've okay. never seen Pulp Fiction in its entirety. I've seen it in bits and pieces. But you like Quentin Tarantino. I like I like the movies I've seen, but I've never. I'm being honest. I've never watched. I right, black film wise, what black film have you not seen? Menace to Society. You've never what? seen Menace to Society. Not in its entirety. Not in its entirety. Not in its entirety. It, I feel it sorry does, for your mother. It does. I, I've seen that part, but I, I don't. I, I because I've seen spoofs on it, so I went back and watched certain things. I feel like we're getting off topic here. This is just <laughs> becoming me You've getting attacked here. You've never seen Menace. To if we can just stay back on track. Oh, oh, okay. But what's the track if you never even see Listen, Coming we, to America? We come across one the track, movie, but the that, track, wasn't, that, that wasn't. Was that so glow? 
That's it just wasn't, so that wasn't, cool. like, that wasn't the top. No, the McDowell's. He has the big Mick. I, they got the Big Mac. I got the Big Mick. Like I never seen it. He said. He said the only difference between the sandwiches was the fact he don't use sesame okay, seed bun. Like yo, okay. Samuel Jackson again. Yo. Again, <laughs> again, again. I'm being attacked here for me because you're like get back on track. But my thing is the track was anticipation of coming to America two. Is it going to be funnier than one? And you haven't seen one. Okay, having... but, but see, I could have just bullshitted the answer and and and, and this wouldn't have happened. Okay. Okay, so that's my concern for somebody who's seen one. I'm just like, yo, I hope to God, like, it's not going to diminish, like, the, cause I didn't think coming to America, I thought leaving it out one was fine. I didn't think it needed to be a franchise. But the fact that you're making it a two, now I'm like, all right, crap, I don't need the two to ruin the one. But I'm gonna assign you a, a homework assignment. I think today you need to sit your ass down and watch coming to America. In its entirety. I will have watched it by the next time. You need to see them two together. And, and part two is coming out, so what better time? No, that's no excuse. I'm sorry, that's no excuse. Listen, it's been listen, years. Listen, I've never listen, seen listen, it. Listen, sometimes things happen, and you don't get around to seeing That's not one things. of them things. Listen. Honestly, when it comes to black films. I'm being judged I've seen very, them all. very harshly here. Okay? I, I, you know what? I'll, I'll admit something. I have never seen juice in this entirety. Okay. I've never seen Juicy. See, and I don't time. judge you for that. Just like I, I feel like that don't hold the same weight. Just like I for some reason, I feel like, like I shouldn't be judged. I shouldn't be judged. But I feel like Juice that don't have the same weight as coming to America. In my opinion, I just don't feel like me saying I never seen Juice is not something that people are like. What you never seen Juice? Like, but coming to America, like yo, you really it's been on VH1 like every day, so what, every fucking day. What, what movie that you saw that it would be sacrilege if someone didn't see? That I've seen? That you said if someone didn't see, it's like, what? Like, it would be a black car revolt. Would it be like A black movie? Like a black car revolt movie. Like, you, like I gotta take it away. Because I say, I'm taking yours away. <laughs> and we talk about Eddie Murphy all the time. Listen, 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 oh, listen. God. Jesus Christ. All right, what all right. movie? What movie? Movie? Yeah. movie? A black movie. Yeah, so, yeah. There must be a lot of black movies you haven't seen. That's why you like Boys in the Hood, sure. maybe? Okay. I mean, I feel like everybody's seen I feel like if nobody's seen Friday, I'd be like, you Friday, gotta be I out mean, your mind. Or life. What, what, for me, it would have to be, uh, and this is for old heads. I'm a little uh-huh. older, I'll, full disclosure. But I love Five Heartbeats. I love that movie. Is it hard in the house tonight? No. Stand up, stand up. <laughs> burp, burp, flash, flash. I love that. All right, yeah, we're definitely off topic. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, sorry for being off topic with that one, but we're going to get you some help. <laughs> but yeah, 2020 movies, let us know what you're looking forward to seeing, what's coming out. I mean, I did hear a little bird in my ear. I mean, aside from the black movies, I mean, Legally Bond 3 is coming out, so I'm kind of like, I think it's coming out, so I'm kind of excited. But anyway, let us know what movies you are looking forward to. Let us know your opinions on these movies. And as always, like, follow, subscribe, and don't judge my friend over here. Who has not seen coming to America? <laughs> Till next time, peace. <laughs> what? <laughs>